היי אול, וולקאם טו מי וריאשנל אוטו אינקודר גייד. The goal of this guide is to take you from a place in which you know how to build a simple vanilla auto encoder using Keras or any other deep learning framework and bring you to a point in which you feel like you can implement a variational auto encoder yourself. Also, we will talk about why variational auto encoder works and what are its advantages and disadvantages. We will discuss architecture, loss function and code and talk a bit about the results. Note that I will only go briefly through vanilla autoencoder. It is meant more as a refresher. So, let us start. All right, let's start with simple, fully connected vanilla autoencoder. The input is a vector, and the information is fed through a bunch of dense layers that gets smaller and smaller until you get to the latent vector, which is the bottleneck. the vector where all of the information is most compressed. The part of the autoencoder up until the latent vector is called the encoder. The other part is called the decoder. And it's a mirror image of the encoder. The vectors get progressively bigger until you reach the size of the input vector. This last vector is called the output vector. The loss for the network is calculated as some measure of the difference between the inputs and the outputs, mean squared error for example. By minimizing the loss, the network learns to make the outputs as similar as possible to the inputs. In order to do this, it has to conserve the, inf- the input's information through the bottleneck in the middle. Convolutional autoencoder is actually much the same, but we replace the vectors inside the network with feature maps and the dense layers with convolutional ones. There is not much of a different difference. Convolutional layers are performing much better for images, among other kinds of tasks. All right, let's get down to business, variational autoencoder. The first thing to notice here is that you can use dense or convolutional layers for most of it. I am using conv layers, since I am dealing with images. The only part in the architecture that is different than what we have seen until now is the middle. I am going to give you a high-level explanation about what is going on here, and then a very in-depth one. In the middle of the network, we convert the information into a vector if it was stored in, a fi- in feature maps, a process called flattening. And from it, we create a vector of means and a vector of variances. Using these means and variances, we sample from a normal distribution with these parameters and use the sampled vector as our latent vector. Don't worry if it's not completely understood right now. We are about to break this down into an implementation level explanation. There is also an addition to the loss function. We now add to the difference between inputs and outputs a measure of how much our distribution from which we sampled the latent vector is different from a normal distribution with mean of zero and variance of one. The term is called the KL divergence. I will give a more detailed explanation about it as well. Let's see now exactly how the latent vector is generated. Let's assume the first value in the means vector is 3 and the first in the variance vector is 0.5. This means the first value in the latent vector will be randomly sampled from a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 0.5. You go through the same process for each of the values in the latent vector. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do we even need random sampling? Well, there is a benefit for sampling when it comes to generative models. In vanilla autoencoder, there is a clear one-to-one mapping. Each point in the input space is mapped into a single point in the latent space, which in turn is mapped into a single point in the output space. The problem with this is that if you give the decoder a lat- latent vector 
that is not in the dataset, it will have a harder time decoding it, since it never seen it. With sampling, the entire area around each latent vector in the dataset can be selected, and the decoder has to know how to deal with it. It helps it generalize better. After hearing my explanation about the variational autoencoder, and given your knowledge about the backpropagation algorithm, you might ask, how can we backpropagate the errors through a sampling layer? There is no gradient for randomly picking something. Well, that's a good question, because we can't. In order to get around this problem, we use the reparameterization trick. This trick has two stages that I will first explain and then talk about why this works. One, we draw randomly for a normal distribution with mean zero and variance of one. We multiply the result by the variance. So if we drew 0.6 as a result from the sampling, we would multiply it with 0.5 to get 0.3. And then we take the result of the multiplication and add the mean. So we add a 3 to 0.3, giving us 3.3, which is the li a likely result for a normal distribution with mean of 3 and variance of 0.5. Now, the reason this is the same as just simply picking from a distribution with our own mean and variances that are network generated is that all we are doing is reversing the order of operations of sampling. Instead of deciding on the distribution, means and variance, and then sample from it, we first sample and get the randomness out of the picture, and then see what is the corresponding value in the distribution we chose. Step 2 will convert our sampled value to the one we would have got from a distribution with zero mean but with our own variance, and step 3 is doing the same for the mean. Another thing we need to discuss is the addition of the KL divergence term to the loss. Here, the KL divergence measures how much the distribution we generated, parameterized by our, by our means and variance, is different from a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance of 1. If we had only this term, the network would have learned to always produce a mean vector of all zeros and variance vector of all ones, which of course carries no information. Combining the inputs outputs difference loss, which from now and on we will call the reconstruction loss, and the KL divergence will result in a conflict between our network's desire to create a different vector for each input and its desire to create a vector of zeros and ones. The derivation of the KL divergence is from a blog post by Fast Forward Labs on Variation Autoencoder that I will link into in the description. It's highly recommended for those who want to get deeper into the theory. The reason we want to keep our means and variances in check is that it will help us to get a compact in interruptible latent space. Here is an awesome picture from a great blog post that illustrates this point. In practice, forcing the latent space to be of a simpler form translates into a more interruptible latent space, which makes, it, which makes each latent variable responsible of one simple characteristic of the output. Of course, this is a trade-off. The simpler you make the latent space, the less reconstruction power it has. This image is from another great blog post by four researchers in the University of Constance that I will too link in the description. I will not go through all of the code, only the parts that are actual variational autoencoder itself. So no GUI, no loading data function, and so on. But you can find the complete, ready to run Jupyter Notebook in my repository the link is in the description. We define input layer that takes the pictures and sends them to the next layer. We let X contain this layer to later allow us to create layers using the for loop. Then we create a list with the number of activation maps for each cond layer. Again, for the loop that comes next. We use a for loop to define the cond layers 
Each layer contains the actual convolution, batch normalization, and leaky relu activation. Afterwards, we perform max pooling to reduce the size of the data. Then comes the interesting part. We flatten the results of the last max pooling layer and pass the information to a dense layer. From there, we split into two dense layers. One will be used for the means vector and the other for the variance vector. The lambda command allows us to use functions as layers. We will soon see the sampling layer implementation. Lastly, we assemble the encoder with the model command. The second argument is a list of all of the outputs. We output not only the latent vector here, but also the means and variances. We need them for the loss function later. Here you can see the sampling function. Please note that all of the mathematical operations that we use are here are implemented using Keras functions, not NumPy. This is important, because this way Keras knows how to combine these operations in the graph, which it, allows it to perform backpropagation. We start by unpacking the means and variances vectors. We get the dimensions of the data, so we later know how much points we need to sample. Then we sample from a standard normal distribution. The last layer is where the magic happens. We perform the reparameterization trick, as we discussed earlier. The decoder is very much like the encoder. We use a dense layer to get the number of parameters needed to, to reshape into feature maps, and then use the combinations of up sampling and conv layers to get back to the shape of the original picture. Lastly, we use a conv layer with only three feature maps to reconstruct the image. Now comes the tricky part. The function gets an encoder model named E and decoder model named D. We first combine the encoder and decoder to build the variational autoencoder. Notice the syntax. Given the images as inputs, the encoder returns three outputs, latent, latent vectors, means and variances. We unpack each into a variable. We then use the latent vector as input for the decoder, D, and finally creates our vari variational autoencoder by, by chaining together the inputs and the outputs. Only one thing is left to define, and it's the loss function. The mean squared error part is easy. Keras already has an implementation for this. The KL term is calculated using the expression given in the loss function slide from before. Only new thing here is the use of the logarithm of the variance instead of just the variance. The reason for that is that sometimes the variance might be very small, and using the log of these values will create bigger values that are better handled by the network. I use the mean of the two terms instead of the sum, but there is no real difference. The reason I multiply the mean squared error term by 10,000 is that the units of the mean squared error term is usually much smaller, and I want the model to give more importance to reconstruction quality than the KL divergence. Now, in order to make the Keras model use a cost function that is not directly driven from input tensors and prediction tensors, that we don't have here, it's unsupervised, we need to use the add loss method. In order to track both terms during training, we define two metrics, one for each term. Okay, that is all I think. Again, to see the full code, please check my repository using the link in the description. Now, let's see the results. I trained my variational autoencoder on anime faces from a dataset available online. I used a latent vector of size 300, which means we have 300 different characteristics to control and change how the face looks. Since the GUI has only place for 12 characteristics, I chose 12 that resulted in the highest variance which is an assumption we used in PCA as well, and it makes sense. You can see how each characteristics change a different thing about the face. One is the gender, other is the... Uh, how bright is the hair, one is the uh, size of the eyes, which is pretty cool actually. You can make it 
you can basically make any kind of faith you can imagine.